There is a stereotype that women do not want to go cruising with men on their sailing boats. It's obviously not true of every woman. There, in this anchorage, we are in Georgetown, there are many women here. But we have also talked to a number of men who have not gone cruising because they couldn't convince their wives to go with them. We're gonna talk about how to make your boat more of a home in a way that is more attractive to having a woman live on board with you. Not all cruising is created the same and you can make boats very comfortable and very homey and we'll chat with our experience in making your boat more comfortable so that a reluctant woman might be more inclined to live on it with you. So we have a list of 13 things that we wanna talk about. One of the first ones that's kind of basic but uh, is, is important is... I would say a comfy bed. Most people don't wanna feel like they're sleeping on the ground and they want a comfortable bed. They don't want to feel like they're camping. Our boat came with hard beds, even though it's 20 years old, and we've been on brand new half a million dollar, quarter million dollar, or three quarter million dollar yachts that come with hard beds. I don't know why they come this way. It's a uh, fairly cheap fix. You go online, buy a bed that's memory foam, that's the size you need, get it in, put some um, stuff underneath to keep it from molding, like some risers or some air mat. That It's just significantly better. Your sleeps are great once you have a nice bed. That's also low hanging fruit. Number two. To put good lighting in your boat. By that I mean not terrible overhead, bright white daylight. Uh, the no boat, office lighting. The boat needs to be homey, it needs to feel comfortable. A good, easy, cheap way to do that is to get some warm LEDs and install them in your boat. Lots, lots of small lights to make the boat. You can still have the big overhead lights for projects, but it's a simple one, it's an easy one, but it goes a long way. You don't want a dark, scary cave boat and you don't want an office boat. <laughs> So, that's a low-hanging fruit one. Uh, not showering over the toilet. <laughs> this one's a little bit harder to achieve, but when you're shopping for your boat, have a head that's separate from your shower. Like, the actual toilet and the actual shower are different. A lot of them try to combine it, and I feel like we've met very few women who live on boats who like that setup, even if they have it. I don't think men like the setup either. Yeah, it's just annoying. Uh, if they're reluctant, you probably want to change that. <laughs> yes. If she's cool with it, fine. If not, when you're shopping, shop for a head or at least two heads and then you can like tear the to toilet out of one and have it be just the shower. If you shower. want to do what we did. <laughs> yeah. We started there. We started there. We didn't, sh we, I don't think we showered on the boat at all until we separated the toilet and the no. head. Um, <laughs> Number four, water maker. It's a little bit more expensive, but when we ask people who have really nice setups what's one of the number one things they like for creature comforts, the water maker almost always comes in near the top. It's just to not have to ration water all the time. We still don't have a great water maker situation. For the first two years we didn't have any water maker, so we definitely know what it's like to be rationing your water. And our current water maker extends our limit with regard to how much water we have, and it's nice. It'd be even nicer if we just didn't have to worry about it at all. It's just yeah. one of those good DC water makers that runs all the time. But um, that will definitely help a reluctant woman to come onto your boat so she can take her showers. <laughs> Wash dishes. Uh, number five would be having a decent electrical system. This is more important once you actually start going cruising, not so much if you're living on the boat, uh, on, at the dock with shore power. But once you're cruising, you need an inverter that's capable of powering things like hair dryers, things like uh, um, kitchen appliances. You straighteners. Know, straighteners, curlers, um. whatever she wants. Your inverter needs to be able to run it, which means your battery bank needs to be able to hold the power for it, you know, ad adequate wiring for it. So that's usually not too, too hard. Maybe when you first buy the boat, have upgrading your battery bank and then getting a decent inverter. And then also making sure you can charge your boat via generator or solar panels. But get a good electrical system. It'll just make everybody happier. Number six, electric freshwater head. We have experience with the, our boat came with four of the hand pump Jabsco toilets. So we used them for about six to eight months. We hated them. They were terrible. They were old. Mm, they were stinky. Every single one of them had a problem and they were salt water. We don't we, like pumping. <laughs> we, sw we swapped out and got an electric freshwater head with a macerator pump and haven't had a single problem with it. It's just push the button. It's so easy and so either that or if you can set your boat up for it, a vacuum flush system might be similar. We've been on boats that have them and it's pretty nice, but um, I think they're more expensive to set up. But the electric fresh water head, was, it's, it's, it's worth it. We have a composting head, but I don't think a picky woman would want that. <laughs> so a reluctant woman, electric fresh water head, push the button, you're good to go. Yeah. Seven, full length mirror. 
This one's a pretty low hanging fruit. You might have to get, we didn't have any mirrors on the boat for like the first year and a half yeah, like of living on it. this size mirror. A makeup mirror for, for like everything. two years. <laughs> Um, but this summer we were able to buy custom built mirrors, custom sized mirrors. It wasn't that expensive and we just put it on the back of the bathroom door and it does the job. So pretty low hanging fruit, just got to get a custom mirror made. Number eight, big closet. Storage space on boats is hit or miss. There's usually a fair bit of storage but it's all nooks and crannies and folded away. Um, on catamarans there might be a little bit less storage. I guess convenient closet to yeah. access all your stuff. Women have a lot more clothing items than men do, so it would be nice to like be able to reach and get them easily. Um, and it also helps if you have a decent amount of closet space for her. Like it's just like with any house, you imagine your stuff in this in the space. So um, that one might require a bit of carpentry if your boat doesn't come with it, but it's ultimately something you can change or allocate space for. Number nine, laundry machine. So these next few are starting to get more extravagant for the even more reluctant or more high maintenance maybe woman. Um, a laundry machine is definitely a luxury. It goes through water so you'll need the power and the water maker to handle it. But to be able to do your laundry and dry your laundry on your boat is very, very nice. Um, we have a in between, we have a little plastic uh, $100, $100 caravan washer, washing machine. Spinner thing. It washes the clothes and it spins them dry and we still have to hang them up and even that is nice but um, yeah maybe someday we'll go all the way and get one of the nice electric uh, units. Number 10, climate control on the hook. Our boat came with a uh, air conditioner but it takes a lot of power and it's kind of old and you have to always run the generator. So we, don't, we tend to not use it that often while we're on the hook. But we have seen boats that they're, they have nice generators, they're quiet, they're in an engine room well insulated, and they have the fuel capacity to just run the, the air, con air conditioner or they have like diesel heaters for the cold. Yeah. And it's just so comfortable, the boat's, the boat's drier. Yeah. Um, it's nice to go to bed and have it drier when it's really hot and humid, just for a couple hours at least, to get comfortable and, and you fall asleep better. So it's a luxury but it's really nice uh it's it, it's the difference between camping and staying in a hotel almost yes number 11 enclosure we still do not have an enclosure and when we are sailing or even when we're at a dock and the rain moves through we're pretty much kicked out from being outside your your cockpit is your porch and having a nice enclosure will keep it warm when it's cold it'll keep it dry when it's wet it'll keep it out of the wind when it's windy they're kind of expensive and they got to be custom fit or you got to build them yourselves but a good enclosure almost doubles the amount of living space you have on your boat number 12 a bit of an indulgence is an electric start dinghy we had a terrible two-stroke horsepower dinghy for a good year and a half but then we bit the bullet and got a 25 horsepower electric start outboard and four stroke and it's so nice to just hit the button the engine turns on, you're not doing the pull cord. The other benefit of having the electric start dinghy is you, since you now have a battery in it to start it, you can put peripheries on, like we added a bilge pump to our dinghy. <laughs> so when it's pouring wet and rain, you can get in and the dinghy, it doesn't have a big puddle in the bottom. It's just nice that I don't have to pull, constantly pull to start the engine. I'd like something I can do myself without his help. You don't have to go full center console uh, for your for your dinghy. Just an electric start, it's a luxury. And the last one is kind of one of a bigger one, but it's number 13, have a catamaran. <laughs> so many women like catamarans. There's so many benefits to living on a catamaran with regard to having space, They're having a home. They're more stable, yeah, it's more homey. You can walk, you don't have to go up and down stairs to go from your cockpit to your salon. It's stable, there's multi-levels. All the ad, ad, all the benefits of a catamaran, some people call them condomarans, uh, <laughs> as if it were an insult, but if you have a woman who is reluctant to move on to a boat because it's too much like camping, then you want a condo Moran. Um, most modern catamarans sail just fine. They sail all around the world. And yeah, I think that's the ultimate, like get a reluctant woman to come live with you on a boat to get a catamaran. A sailboat. Men, again, this is a stereotype. This is not true across the board and some women will like this, but men have this romantic idea of beating to windward in a sailboat, pushing, plowing through the waves. But you don't, you don't do that very often. You live on your boat far more than you sail on your boat. And so, I just want to say, I like sailing a monohull better because I, I feel the wind and, and the movement 
but to live on, I like a catamaran. So that's our tips for those of you whose partners are reluctant to move on board with you. I mean, ultimately, if she's not into it, it's not gonna happen. But show her things that she's more inclined to be interested in and don't show her the rough life. <laughs> and if it takes you an extra year to do it, or two years to save up for it, at least you can still live the dream and get out there and do it. You don't have to completely think of something else. It's still something you can share in. Those women don't want to camp. They want a home, so. Yeah. And, for, and if you have a woman who doesn't need most of this stuff, can count yourself lucky. <laughs> <laughs> See you next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps some of you. Bye.